Stefan Graham has rapidly become one of my favorite YouTubers. His content is inspiring and educational, so when I spend my nights watching videos, I can at least claim that I learned something new and furthered my life in finances. So welcome to the side entrance right over here. Come on in. Now, as you can see here, this house is all the way in the back. It's entirely self-sufficient, and in terms of rental value, this one is phenomenal. However, what I find most captivating about him is his growth rate on YouTube. He has a total of 184 million views on the platform. If you look at his latest uploads, he consistently breaks 500,000 views on each of his newest videos. In the last 30 days alone, he has brought in over 11 million views, which breaks down to an estimated $55,000 in YouTube ad revenue. How one guy who started his channel less than four years ago managed to grow to an incredible 2.26 million subscribers. Maybe Stefan Graham knows something we don't. In this video, we're gonna analyze how he's beating the algorithm, reaching out to new people each and every day, growing his subscriber count exponentially. If you're a creator who wants to grow a channel, get ready to jot down some notes. On this channel, I like to analyze stocks, option plays, and various other financial topics. Today, we're gonna to look at something a little different, the business of YouTube and how you yourself can quickly grow in this massive ecosystem of channels. Now, if you were gonna ask Stefan Graham what his secret is, how he's able to grow so quickly on the platform, he would probably give you a general answer like this. All you need to know right now is just how to use Google. That's it. I'm actually being pretty serious here. Pretty much everything you like will need to know is already on Google and YouTube. So like whatever you want to do, YouTube it and Google it and start learning as much as you can about it. But let's be real, success is not totally built around sheer willpower. There is a certain strategy some influencers on YouTube use in order to accelerate their growth. The top YouTubers all understand how the mighty algorithm works. They get what kind of content is necessary to accelerate their channels to the next level. If you think Stefan Graham just makes good content, you would be mistaken. It goes deeper than that. I've broken down the three strategies Stefan uses in nearly every single one of his uploads. These outlines will make you realize just how much work goes into each one of his videos and why he's so successful at growing his channel. The most appealing part about all this is that these are steps anyone could take in order to increase their numbers on their very own channel. Let's get right into it. When it comes down to it, what Graham is doing is essentially feeding the algorithm what it wants. YouTube uses their algorithm as an engagement tool, essentially promoting videos that keep users on the platform. The more they are watching and the longer they are doing so, the more money creators and Google can make. Using this graph, we can better understand how content goes viral. Let's take this video as an example. When it was first uploaded, the video was shown to what's called the initial audience. This relatively small group of people is made up of users who have recently watched Graham videos or are his subscribers. If this video performs well in this group, it will then be promoted to the next larger group. The viral climax moment occurs when the algorithm decides to show this video to a wider audience made up of much more people. If it still performs really well, then it goes viral accumulating millions of views and impressions. As YouTube spreads this to more and more people, it continues to monitor the performance and analytics until the video runs out of steam and climaxes. When people say, the algorithm picked up my video, this is what they mean. It's just recommended over and over again until it plateaus and declines. It is absolutely true that Graham does get a head start by having a huge subscriber base, but the elements required to make a video go viral are not much different for a small channel. The all-important question is how does YouTube exactly decide what videos go viral and how do we capitalize on this information? What data are they observing? But although the specifics are a trade secret, we do know enough to understand that the algorithm largely observes three specific parameters. Audience retention, click-through rate, and watch time. When it comes to viral videos, these three metrics are what your focus should be on. It varies from time to time, but in general, if you can get a minimum of 50% retention, 10% click-through rate, and above 4 minutes of watch time, you have a golden recipe that is very likely to go viral. Even looking over my biggest videos, which are nowhere near viral, they tend to line up with these stats. Those that did the best came closest to achieving this golden recipe. 
So what is Graham doing to ensure that each one of his uploads is achieving these parameters? Now obviously making videos on hot topics and having nice camera and lighting helps you, but a lot of people do the same and try to copy, yet they only see a fraction of the results. Let's first look at step number one, how he structures each one of his videos to keep you watching. When you take a look at his uploads, one thing you'll notice is the general length. Nearly all of his videos are above 12 minutes, and when you watch it, it really doesn't seem like they're that long. Time flies quickly when you're using retention tactics, and this is what Graham specializes at. In each of his uploads, he puts forth questions and keeps the audience engaged, always thinking about the next subject. Essentially, it's a hook, some background, and a setup to introduce the next topic. In the beginning, Graham explains what the video is about, gives you some context on why he's doing it in a specific way, and then goes on to explain how he goes about doing it. Let's take a look at one of his videos, and you'll see what I mean. I have been waiting such a long time for this. It's, well, like two days for it to be on UPS. But anyway, I've been tracking it for the last few days. It just came. My hand is literally shaking right now. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm just, just kidding about that one. It seems like every time someone gets something new, they, they say something. Next is the fact that each of his videos has great rhythm. What you need to understand is that the typical YouTube watcher has a relatively short attention span. They get bored quite quickly. If you can maintain good rhythm in all your videos, this is what's gonna separate you from the rest of the pack. Rhythm is said to be what separates great YouTubers from good ones, and Graham does an excellent job of this. There are no dull moments. Without missing a beat, Stefan gets right to the point. Sure, he could spend 10 minutes explaining a specific topic, but he chooses to summarize and move things along at a great pace that keeps viewers engaged throughout. Finally, there is the reward portion. While setting you up with the hook, the reward in Graham's case is the answer that comes towards the end of the video. Our minds are wired to think that there is a reward at the end. The key is to keep people watching throughout with pacing so that they make it to the end for the final reward. So when you combine all of these concepts into one well-edited video, the viewer is heavily incentivized to stick around and watch it in full. The final result is a retention line that I've never seen before straight lines across. While most people are lucky to get retention curves that look like this, dropping off right at the 50% mark, Graham's lines look a lot like this. YouTube's algorithm absolutely loves straight retention curves, and Graham views are evidence of this. Now that I've covered how he's able to keep users watching, we can move on to the final piece, which is how he's able to achieve a high click-through rate, gathering new viewers at an incredible pace. What Graham uses is amazing titles and thumbnails. A few years ago, there were some changes to the algorithm regarding metadata. Things like tags and descriptions used to be a lot more valuable, but now creators are much more focused on the first two I mentioned. The only thing that most successful YouTubers recommend description-wise is to use a description that is vivid and attractive while remaining under 50 characters. This means that in the mobile app, your description will not be cut off and will work to attract more clicks whenever someone is browsing on their phone. So what is exactly special about Graham's titles? Well, there are a couple of things to note. First of all, they're all almost exclusively under 50 characters, short and to the point. Titles like these attract users because they're clear and punchy. While the titles are an important aspect, without a doubt, the main focus of CTR is the thumbnail. Stefan's thumbnails are very well done. While some may say they look a bit amateur, this is exactly the point. On YouTube, users are looking for homegrown content, and while this may not look professional, it has that unique design that combines homemade looks with an attractive clickable title. This is exactly why we watch our favorite creators instead of professionally made TV shows. More aesthetic doesn't necessarily mean more clicks on this platform. Obviously, the most important part of the thumbnail is the ability for the thumbnail to capture what is actually happening in the video. Sometimes this is an exaggeration, but it's usually a fine balance between clickbait and what it is he's actually going to be talking about in the video. I can't stress this enough. Thumbnails are incredibly important on YouTube. One simple change can catapult a video with 10,000 views to a million views. A 1% change in the CTR can have dramatic effects on the probability that the algorithm goes and picks it up. While thumbnails may look simple, I guarantee you Graham spends hours on them trying to get them just right. Thumbnails are a heavily underrated portion of the channel, especially for new creators who believe their content quality is the only thing that matters. 
While all of this may look simple, putting it all together and executing it with perfection is what separates the top 1% from the rest of us. The creator space on this platform is tightening competition-wise by the minute, and being able to adapt to the algorithm is the key to success. Finding and perfecting ways to increase those specific metrics is the key to catapulting yourself from YouTube amateur to full-time creator. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you go and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed, and make sure you drop a comment below on what you think about Stefan Graham's channel as one of the leading creators in the finance space.